So I want to talk about uh, ASAP's square, a flex. This is a Mellanox term. Uh, for uh, vSwitch and virtual router acceleration, I want to talk about hardware classification offload, uh, how it's done in OVS uh, DPDK, uh, to talk about an RFC that we are pushing and the performance of it, um, to talk about at the next level of it, that's how we want to do it with uh, VXLAN also. It's required a multi-table. Uh, okay, so let's start. So uh, we call ASAP Square for accelerate switch and packet processing. We, call, we have two terms regarding the SRIOV one and a flex for when you don't use SRIOV. So when you don't use SRIOV, the, the things, the, the big difference is that the packets still go through the software. So what we can do, we can offload the classification, we can off, uh, offload the VXLAN in-cap decap or VLAN push pop, and we, do so, we can do some quality of service. So we start, of course, with the long-hanging fruits. So we take the classification offload, and the idea is like you take the, uh, the OVS, all the megas flows that's in the data path of OVS, and for every rule in the data path, you create an, a rule to the hardware to, class, to classify and give you an, a flow ID or a hint. Um, or even if it's uh, something that's in to be dropped, the action will be to drop in the hardware. S and when the, the packet is received by the software, if it's have a flow ID, you know that is related to a specific rule and you don't need to classify the packet in, in order to understand what action need to be done for this packet. So let's take, for example, the, an OVS um, set action Y on flow with a classification X. So that, that's the term that OVS uh, want to do. So we take it to two parts. So we add to the hardware a rule uh, to flow tag uh, with a number, just a given number one, two, three, four, to every flow with type X. Um, the, we configure the data path, the software data path to do when getting those packets with one, two, three, four, so you can directly do the actions. You don't need to do any, any more classification, so that's what we can save. The same also can be done, of course, for uh, dropping packets, like when you, do a D, when you want to handle a DDoS attack or, or other kind of uh, dropping. So there, but the difference between those, that's the action, it's of course because the packet is not, you don't want the packet to reach the software, you're dropping it, so you don't need to have any flow tag, but what you do, what you do want, you want it to be count, because you want to maintain and the number of packets that was dropped in the hardware because you don't see them on the software, so you can't count them in the software. So in order to do that, what we did in the RFC, we had in the um, obvious DPDK have the exact match cache. That is an exact match, as it's called. And w what we do in, before we go into the exact match cache, the first thing that we're doing, we want to see if there is a flow ID for this packet. So in order to do that, as I mentioned before, we are doing for every data path rule, and every mega flow, we just create an RTE flow into the hardware in order to classify this packet. When we, and when the packet is arrived, what we are doing, if the packets have a flow ID, we are not going to the exact match cache, we just, to the EMC, we, we directly take the flow tag and understand, it. and from the flow tag, we know exactly which flow it was uh, used, uh, related to, and we can do directly the actions that's in this, uh, uh, in, the, in the rule. So, we have the two suggestions of RFCs, 
and we are combining them now to a single RFC. Um, so the RFC was sent by uh, Yonhan, that uh, couldn't come today. And we have some rough performance. So when taking uh, traffic from vi a wire to virtual IO interface to a virtual machine, uh, we got about uh, 5.2 uh, million packets per second. And with the uh, offloading, we get about 7.7. .7, so it's roughly 50% 50, 50 improvement. Uh, from wire to wire, it's even more. It's around 70%. And I think what is more important, when those two tests was with a single flow, but when we, try, when we have more flows, we have also a cache, a cache, uh, cache miss issues, of course, in the host. So, for example, when you just have 52, uh, 512, uh, 512 flows, the performance drop for the same test from around almost 7 million packets per second to 4.2 million, 4 million packets per second, just because we have a lot of flows. That is not happening so drastically in the hardware. So when you talk about uh, 50, 12 flows, the hardware performance almost the same, just drop from 11.7 to 11.2. So then we gain a lot of improvement, like more than, uh, more than twice. More than... Uh, of course, those numbers was on a single core, single uh, queue. So we will hope that this RFC will be, we will finish it. I think now we are, have a, a virtual, a version four for this uh, RFC. Okay, so, and the next challenge is to support VXLAN. So VXLAN in OVS is working like a, a two level switches. There is the lower switch that's working on the outer packet and then it go to v, it go to a VXLAN device, and then it's reclassified again on the inner packet. So all the idea that we are trying to do to achieve in the RFC will just accelerate the lower switch. So in order to accelerate all the packet pi pipeline, we, we need to do something else. So in order to do that, I want to present something that's it's kind of multi-table. So the action usually, what we've done before, is to classify a packet and to set a flow ID. Now, or, or, or to drop a packet, of course, in, in counting. And what I want to suggest is to have the hardware, instead of classify the, give a flow ID, it can send you to another table. And this table can represent different switches, or, or even VPP, it can do another uh, high, uh, high hierarchy, hierarchical things. So the idea of tables that can point to a table, then you can maintain rules that's in the second table. So while we're using that, we can implement the same thing for VXLAN. So the idea when we use OVS with, with, with VXLAN, that's the lower level switch that is doing things on the uh, outer. At the end, it just say, okay, go to the VXLAN port. And when those packet is coming, so the, the, the hardware offload of that, it mean go to the table. When a rule is adding to the higher level switch, that's, it's coming from an, an virtual interface. It's a VXLAN. It's not related to a specific PMD because uh, a packet can come, if it's a link, link aggregation or something, the packet could come from two different, even two different PMDs. So we want to use the, sa the same concept of a flow tag, but now we want to do it in, a, in the second table. So that's what we'll do. Um, it will, it will resolve the, the, the issue that we had before. That's the classification now. The flow tag, the flow ID that we're getting, 
is mean that the packet has, cro uh, has crossed according to the rules of the lower switch, was passed according to the rules of the upper switch, and we just need to do the actions that related to the second switch. So, and in order to maintain the aging of the, of the rules in the lower switch, all the rules of the lower switch are supposed to, be, to have uh, counters. So then you can know on which rule, even that the packet was crossing, like, it, like it's done in the drops. So if a packet is crossing the lower switch, it still, uh, it still count on the, on the counters. So we can maintain when, we do the, when OVS is doing the, the aging, he can read the counters of those flows, even that those packets not seen by the lower switch when he, he process the packets. So, explain that. Uh, okay, so I want to suggest to, to extend uh, the RTE uh, flow with, um, with a new things that I think it's there, but it's not quite organized yet. Uh, it's called groups. So right now, uh, you, can, you can have a group, but the idea that the group will be a table. So when you create uh, a rule, you can specify for which group it's belong to. That's, so you can add the rules to a specific table. And the second thing that's need to be extend is a go-to table, a go-to a go to group. That means that you classify on the on group zero, that's the default group, of course, if you didn't specify any any group. And you can say according to the according to the specification of the flow, go to the different table, to a different group. And then in a different group, you can use a flow tag or or whatever it's required. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, Ronnie. Okay, thank you. Thank you.